way. And of course the hips go back and they're gonna spin out too this way. So I'm gonna focus on that. And I got the judo chop working. It's doing uh, everything I want. I mean, everything, okay? So the judo chop move, you can do, I took a whammo frisbee, I think I showed you guys this. Wham, you know, you take the whammo and you get it on plane here, right? So that the whammo's on top underneath the pan here. And then you're just whoosh, down that way. Now, when you're coming down, your, your arms are not out in front this way. You are gonna shift somewhat, but you're still trying to think about how to get those arms down to the side of you a little bit, okay? So the hands aren't gonna be out, look how much I gotta rotate. If I do that, that just disconnects the arms, right? We don't wanna do that. So the arms are nice and connected. Number four, accumulator's loaded. The wrists are cocked and I'm going down judo, right? And I've got it all right here or I can just wham it right in there. And if I start to do it separate, now the left arm's off the body here, that's not good. We wanna look like we're releasing and connected, right? Pressure points four and five. So, again, the judo chop's a good, uh, good plane in the game feel. It's like just chopping the right hand like this, going down the plane angle, going all the way down to the ball. When you're doing that and you're just trying to keep your head over the ground, my face angle the same, not doing this. My eyes are all over the place here. Now they're not. That was a fly in my eye there. <laughs> that was fucked up. All right, everybody. I'm gonna show you the judo chop drill that I like a lot. Now my judo chop, left-handed is this way, right? That's going right down the plane. Okay, the plane angle goes down to the bottom of the swing plane to the plane line, all right? What happens is I see a lot of dudes, chicks, take their arms off the plane out here on the way down early. So kind of get up here and then all of a sudden there's rotation. You need to get those hands used to tracking down the plane angle down the ski slope this way. I'm looking at a ski slope down here to the side of my body. So by the time I get down to the golf ball, it's a has a descending blow coming slightly from the inside. Here's the judo chop. Okay, it was a short backswing because I'm trying to use the P3, which is when the left arm gets level to the ground, and P5 when it's level on the way down. So level on the way up, level on the way down. They're both the same when you do a half swing, okay? So keep it uh, peck high over here and do the judo chop. That's the drill. So when I go back and look at these in a bit, I know that sometimes I'll get out a little bit and then I've got to shift my head back to try to drop it in. And that's just a bunch of changing there. My, my head and my shoulders where they are tipped over the, the shoes is a big deal for me to stay in balance. I just want to feel like I'm not moving anything. I'll, I'll specifically do that. Yeah. So that was the best one. Right on the pin there. Um, so on that last one, like I said, I got the center of gravity, you know, the, the lower ones here and then here and then up in the head, right? So when you look at my ear, that's the upper center of gravity from your view. The inside of the armpit, I'm gonna go back and bring it right back that way. Mr. O'Grady's more at action. So uh, P1 is just a dress, okay guys? P2 is when the shaft's level to the ground. And what I'm practicing right now, I'm doing some isolation to keep the club, you know, kind of an isolated movement. Uh, to get the club head up in front of my hands a little bit. I'll tend to get them under a little bit and wind it around. And that creates also too much rotation in my body rather than staying over the ground. So uh, what I wanted to show you was this, is that when you're taking it back and your hands stay underneath your shoulder sockets, like I said, as you go back, you'll see the club head starts to elevate. Now back in the early Morad days, Mac was down low like this. That already creates radial hinging cocking of the club already. And so when you start up this way, man, you're already, see if I can hit one, that's back, back in the old days here. Yeah. Uh, you'll see that the club did not get underneath my hands at P2. Underneath the hands this way, no bueno. So what I'm gonna do is show you just the alignment stuff that we're working on here. Club heads uh, on the outside of the hands here, but it doesn't feel like I'm pushing the handle and getting it way out wide. That's not what I'm doing. 
when I'm practicing it's like this, I'm, I'm taking it back and just bending the right wrist some, cocking the left wrist some, folding the right elbow some, all in an effort to nail the leverage of the club going up on plane. So by the time it gets level to the ground, club head sweet spot looks maybe a little higher than my hand, which I don't mind at all. Um, and then the idea would be this, guys. It's like, if I got it here, and I go up, and let's say I'm flat left wrist and things look lined up very nice here. When it comes down, if I start to charge my body, now my club head is underneath the plane. You got it? It fell away from the plane. It has to come back down on the plane so that at the point right here, about P6, that, you know, P6-ish, that club head needs to get back out to the bottom of the plane. And what happens is I see too much dragging going on. Now, now I'm way over here and the club hasn't had it fall back to the bottom of the plane angle, right? So I go like this and sometimes I'll feel like, okay, I need to get, I need to get the angle back out and feel like it's gonna come from down here to P6 and now it's time to start to unhinge some things to get it uncocked down to the bottom of the plane angle. That'll look like here. a little fast with my body but the ball went dead straight this wasn't perfect so if you let it fall you know if you let it fall down the plane angle it would be this right here's just the club falling down the body might bump out of the way to help the arms just kind of come back down and that's not a bad feel either but the bottom of the swing needs to have a nice descent maybe slightly from inside a half or two degrees so we got to nail the first part here okay so a lot of reps where you would just take it here like this that's outside of my hands there i'm up to p2 and it's kind of pointing at my left leg here and i'm okay um flat left wrist p threes in a little bit back down to the left leg club heads out there we go ways to kind of train how to get this thing back down the plane. Now, a lot of you might try the rotation deal, kind of the modern swing, is you get it over here and then you unwind. Now I've got so many forces going off that way, I'd have to jam the elbow in and uncock this way. So it'd be like from here, right? Kind of a dip down action. And that's a little bit complicated. Um, if you think about that judo chop move I was saying earlier, where you know, you're just feeling the arms chopping down the, the ski slope, right? And there's some uncocking of the elbow, you know, the leverage coming out there, a little bit of the wrist angles coming out. Pretty good feel. At the end of the day, it's all we want. And then keep that head in place. Yeah, so there we go. Tidbits. That's all we need.